10 crazy beliefs. How about new? The flat earth and space is not real. The idea of the flat earth is quite bizarre to me. It's utterly disproven. The mathematical evidence, the observations you can make, the stars you can see in the sky, so many more things that prove that the earth definitely, with absolute certainty, is not flat. It's simply nonsensical and some people go further and suggest that there's a disc above us as well. It makes no sense. They believe it's either a disc above us or a dome that's over us. And when it comes to Antarctica, oh, you can't go there. You can't even look for the South Pole because there's, well, a flotilla of UN ships which prevents you from going there. When people have actually worked out the number of ships required, there'd have to be thousands of them. So what on earth are people talking about? The idea of a conspiracy to cover up the flat earth, when clearly the earth is not flat, and that's shown, well, observing the stars is a key point, but also observing how planes operate, how they fly around the earth, so many other things, fundamentally disproven. And yet people keep on digging their hole deeper and deeper to try and support their, well, debunked theory. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life! This one's a bit more normal. Aliens are humanoids. It's assumed by people that aliens must be humanoid. The aliens who come here, who have no genetic connection to us, they must be humanoid. Or hey, maybe they do have a genetic connection. They planted us here. They seeded us here. Really? Where's your proof? Oh, you don't really have any. Well, let's hear your other ideas. Oh, right. Um... Humanoids have the best suited form for advanced life. Really? Do you know that's the case? Are you sure about that? Is that factually correct? There's so many potty ideas out there, they don't even have to be even remotely true for people to believe them. But by suggesting they are true, people will accept them. By having enough argument in there and a few bits of suggestive information, some kind of, something approaching proof, some kind of evidence. Not really evidence for their claim, but something which is actually factual. And they try and make out that it must be true, even though their belief has more to do with science fiction than reality. And the belief that aliens have already come, or have likely visited, or passed through, or even that we're related to aliens. And even if that isn't the case, they have potty ideas that there must be humanoid life like us. And that is the form that intelligent life takes in the universe, even though they have no reason to assume this to be the case. Although if we consider the broad possibilities in a vast universe, the potentiality for humanoid life isn't that low. But it's certainly not high enough to make practically every single civilization or every well, so many civilizations humanoid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The idea that we go somewhere after death. And by that, I don't simply mean, you know, your body rotting in the ground. Uh, the engrossed necrophores, the bacteria that break you down. Um, they don't mean that. They don't mean the worms crawling through your uh, decomposing body and coffin. They don't mean the, uh, well, the acid and everything in your body that breaks down your body, your stomach acid, continues to work after your death. They don't mean any of that, no. They mean that your consciousness, your mind, mind being the functionality of the brain in effect, they mean that that goes somewhere, some of a realm of existence, into some of a being, some of a place, some of a time, perhaps. And there's no reason to assume that is the case. That's why these things are a matter of belief. You have people make claims about reincarnation or about the afterlife or returning from the afterlife or near death experiences where they're not even death experiences, they're near death. By definition, they're not representative of the afterlife. So what are these people really talking about? So when it comes down to, ooh, I don't know, about, I don't know, six or seven billion of you, why do you assume that you understand what happens after we die? When really, we have simply the evidence for the physical destruction of our form. The body dies. We die with it. 
our consciousness. Our body decomposes. The energy that we used in our life, that we consumed through food, it goes back to the earth. And that's pretty much it. End of the story. To believe anything else is wishful. And it's not to say that it's necessarily impossible in every single way. Perhaps, maybe, possibly. But we have no reason to assume that it must be the case. Other than through a matter of belief, a matter of faith. Our universe is doomed! We need religion for morals. To be ethical. We need to have, well, rules from above, from God. Enlightened persons, prophets for God, or whatever the case may be. This idea doesn't seem to ring true because it assumes there must be a God, rather than the idea of God being enough to help people to accept moral positions. Primitive human beings and their primitive ways, using a kind of, well, fear tactic really, or the idea of receiving some kind of reward if you act in a well, reasonably moral way. In many ways, the fundamentals, the, the foundation of morality is inherited because those civilizations which were not so well attuned to cooperation and development of their culture, of their tribe, of their civilization, wouldn't last. They would fall into decadence, crumble, and die. Fuck off! Fuck off! Hitler was a genius. And I hear people say it more often than you might think. And I've heard some people say that he was a mad genius who stood up for Europeanism. Whatever that means. So presumably they mean European culture. When in actuality, I don't think that was the case. The obliteration of cultural sites, uh, the desecration of certain uh, areas, certain cultures as well. There's no reason to say that, oh right, you were setting up for Europeanism. Seems to me there are a lot of closet racists, closet Nazi lovers, really, closet neo-Nazis, who are basically saying they respect Hitler because he was a genius. Oh, he very nearly won World War II. Yes, he wasn't solely responsible though, was he? He was in charge of Germany, but he put his people in charge, demanded results, and use that kind of pressure to get the best possible results, considering the circumstances and the resources involved. You don't need to be a genius yourself in every single way, and I think that term genius is overused by a great many people. What do you really mean by genius? So, why don't you do us both a favour and pull the trigger! Do it! Do it, mother Pull the trigger! If some conspiracies are real, why can't mine be real? You're calling people conspiracy theorists? Conspiracy nuts. But hey, Watergate happened. And if Watergate happened, and a variety of other conspiracies turned out to be true, then why can't mine be true? And the answer is quite simple. The reason why people call people conspiracy theorists in the modern age, or even a conspiracy nut, conspiracy buff, or whatever the case may be, is because they're expressing a poorly supported or unsupported idea of a series of events, a conspiracy if you will, and their particular theory isn't so much of a working theory as much as, well, an, a poorly tested or untested idea of what took place. So the use of the term theory in terms of calling a person a conspiracy theorist is to say they're not so much considering all of the information involved, all of the facts, and coming up with a working theory. It's more a question of procrastinating about a particular belief, a particular series of beliefs, that they've been convinced of. Retard alert class! Four, our culture is superior. How many people say that? Our culture is superior. Ah, uh, yes, of course, French culture superior, our wonderful, uh, you know, our history, our in-depth art, centuries of progress in philosophy and science. And then the British, they say the same. And you even end up with Irish supremacists who say something very similar. 
and American ultra patriots who say the same thing. And they all show off their ridiculous, almost mythological history. How they taint things, how they twist things. How they get things wrong, but for their own benefit. They don't realise they're blinded by their patriotic view. That through their devotion to patriotism, to the idea of, oh, the perfect America, or, you know, Australia first, or Britain first, or whatever the case may be, they're not actually expressing the best of their nation and culture. They're simply dwelling in the dream of what they wish they were or could be. No! No! The Hollow Earth and the Reptilians. Now, many of you hear about reptilian conspiracy theories from David Icke, and you may have heard of the Hollow Earth theory from conspiracy theorists and nut jobs around about five or ten years ago. It went through a popular phase around about five or eight years ago, and people have still stuck to it to some degree, although in some ways it's been surpassed by the Flat Earth theory. But the Hollow Earth theory is, at least in many cases, that you have openings at the North and South Pole, and through those openings, you go through into an inner Earth. There's also a star, or some kind of star-like form, at the centre of the Earth, and you have continents on the inside of our planet, where various alien civilizations, alien to us, exist, including reptilians. Now, many of these people have a sort of New Age view of these things. You don't get too many Christian fundamentalists buying into the Hollow Earth. They're too busy with the Flat Earth. But of course, you have a great many people who are kind of alternative, New Age, a bit confused. And they believe in this kind of view because, hey, why not? They watch documentaries where there seems to be a hole or some kind of dark patch or perhaps a blur of an image of the North Pole. Or hey, maybe their image from Google Earth has a glitch in it and it's showing a black patch or a patch which isn't filled in. What are they trying to cover up? Of course, the pathetic thing about all conspiracy theories is, because of the very nature of the modern conspiracy theorist, is that they do not look at all the facts. They're not a rogue investigator researching, getting to the truth. They're not a person probing deep and discovering a new idea or proving an old idea or trying to prevent some kind of conspiracy in the background. Instead, it's people who have poorly supported ideas who then have someone to blame when they can't prove it. Oh, that person just confronted my belief. Instead of actually debating them and admitting where I'm wrong, instead I'm just going to claim that they're part of the conspiracy. <laughs> Muslims are mostly bad. And why? Because I has evidence from biased sources. Yeah, people do that a lot. They claim to have evidence for a claim because they have a biased source. Hey, you know, those liberals, they show these surveys, but we got our own surveys and it shows that Bahrain is a real, I don't know, borderline ISIS hellhole. So they point at ridiculous surveys and they point out how Oh, how radical they are, and in some ways they're correct. Of course, as with any survey, it depends on how questions are asked, what the options are involved, how many people were involved, and some of those surveys are simply pathetic. Oh, you've had a couple of dozen people involved in a survey, and you ended up with a radical result. Let's use that to whitewash the entire subject, shall we? That is the kind of trick that people on the far left use, but also people on the far right. You know, no, everyone's good. It's a tiny, tiny minority who are bad. The other ones say, oh, no, everyone is, well, pretty bad, but there's a tiny number of people who are fairly good. It's all bullshit in the end, people selecting out sources and saying it's all good, it's all bad. And of course, you end up with people who, let's be entirely honest, are a little bit nutty, and they just simply cannot tell the difference between, well, a woman in Saudi Arabia who's beaten, chained to the sink, and has no freedom, can't drive, can't decide her future, has to be escorted when she goes out to buy anything. And a free Muslim woman, say in Turkey, who may wear the headscarf or might not, wears makeup, paints her nails, wears modern clothes. 
but they cannot see the difference between a progressed nation and one which is ultra conservative. Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! One, the Mandela effect, and the idea that, oh right, so time's being changed in the past. Yeah, yeah. And how do you know that? Because we notice the changes. This little fan theory isn't even intelligent. If someone was changing your timeline, let's just say hypothetically, something you did yesterday was removed from time. You had a sandwich, and it's like, no, instead you had a, a, a Cornish pasty. And someone, you know, someone changed it to that. They, um, I don't know, undercharged you on something or gave you the wrong food or, you know, you had a sudden change in mind. You wouldn't remember the other choice today unless you're a person who probably has some kind of mental illness. No, things were different yesterday. They've changed things again. Hey, I remember things differently. See how they've changed it? And from that, you can infer so many things. Maybe the Holocaust didn't happen. No, it's already been changed. So, yeah, it didn't happen, but we remember it happening because of the effect of the... Ma well, this... Because of the Mandela effect. It's insane. So basically, there are just so many ridiculous ideas out there where people think that they know more than they actually do, that they understand more than they actually do, and most of the time it's simply a question of belief. Whether it's on the internet or in some ridiculous book they brought out of a charity shop. Some fringe bit of research which makes no fucking sense. Search your feelings, you know it to be true.